Hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, first Cardano Kyiv uh, meetup. Um, today we have a special guest, uh, Professor Roman Olinikov from IOHK, famous cryptographer, PhD, and the topic will be Ouroboros protocol. We are conducting this meetup uh, both offline and online. Um, and uh, I want to thank uh, Azure Ada stake pool operator uh, Azure for sponsoring this meetup. And this is uh, only the first meetup of a series of Cardano meetups, which we plan to have in Ukraine, both online and uh, offline. Mm -hmm. uh, now we'll listen to the lecture about uh, Ouroboros protocol, and then um, everyone could be able to ask the questions, uh, both on online and offline, and uh, then we'll have um, uh, some more communication. So thanks everyone for watching and for coming. Thank you for invitation. Uh, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, thank you for watch, uh, watching online. Uh, it's my pleasure to give an overview of our Boris family uh, protocol overview. So uh, protocol are <coughs> uh, really interesting. Uh, they have uh, really bright ideas uh, within it. And I'm very proud uh, to be a part of the team that uh, works, uh, works and develops uh, such, uh, such protocols. Uh, today I'll speak a little bit about uh, general uh, properties of uh, consensus protocols, <coughs> uh, specifics of proof of stake uh, protocols, uh, about Roboros or, or Roboros Classic uh, protocol, how it works, uh, and uh, the further family uh, started from Prowse and finishing with uh, Roboros uh, Cripsy. I will give an overview of uh, such uh, protocols. Okay. So if we speak about centralized consensus uh, system. Uh, what uh, do we have here? Uh, we have a set of nodes. Uh, these nodes are uh, united into some uh, P2P network. Uh, and these nodes exchange uh, of messages. They send uh, messages uh, from one uh, to another. Uh, and uh, <coughs> they do such exchange. There is no neutral point, there is no plastic uh, party. Uh, moreover, some of nodes uh, within such network can be corrupted, something like that, uh, this and, uh, for example, this. And uh, corrupted nodes uh, can be controlled, uh, signalized uh, by some adversary. Uh, all other nodes, uh, they don't know who is honest, who, uh, who is uh, adversarial nodes. And in this uh, settings, uh, honest nodes need to come uh, to consensus. Uh, so, this uh, <coughs> Notes uh, uh, we have here are uh, only majority over 50% uh, of notes are honest. Uh, <coughs> uh, honest uh, notes uh, exchange uh, uh, messages that uh, correspond to the protocol uh, rules. Uh, a malicious note can send arbitrary messages uh, that can be taken as uh, uh, honest or malicious. Uh, but uh, if we uh, have uh, uh, such uh, uh, conditions satisfied, if uh, over 50% of uh, nodes are honest, in this case, uh, <coughs> uh, all honest nodes uh, come to the same state. So each node doesn't know uh, uh, which uh, node is uh, honest, which honest, uh, or, or which node is dishonest. Uh, but following the protocol, uh, it will build uh, its own blockchain. Uh, according uh, to the uh, protocol. Moreover, I will put your attention uh, to the fact that uh, there are no uh, something like common blockchain or something like that. Each node uh, builds his own blockchain. But uh, following the protocol, this copy, uh, uh, each copy of blockchain will be fully identical. Moreover, when you run the full node, it doesn't matter whether it's Cardano node, Bitcoin node, or something like that, your node uh, builds uh, his own blockchain. And uh, uh, okay. so, if you are speaking about the blockchain uh, distributed ledger, in this case, uh, we need to have uh, two main properties for uh, this distributed ledger. The first, uh, <coughs> uh, the second one uh, is called ledgers. Uh, persistence uh, means uh, that uh, if we have, uh, if we have uh, some uh, blockchain and uh, this blockchain uh, is uh, built on our node and we have some part of uh, fresh new blocks 
And if another node are built on the same blockchain, says the following. Uh, if we cut any uh, freshly new blocks uh, 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 from this blockchain, so here uh, in for this case, all the such parts. So we uh, cut some uh, amount of uh, new uh, generated blocks and all the rest uh, becomes unusable part of the blockchain. So it's persistent. So if we uh, have uh, some transaction, and transaction uh, is uh, located somewhere here within the persistent part, it means that uh, we accept this transaction, and this transaction becomes immutable, and uh, uh, this transaction takes a period of time, uh, it will be eventually included into uh, one of these blocks, and uh, after some period of time, it will become within the persistent part. Uh, so, uh, it is very close to censorship resistant property and that we don't have censorship here. Uh, nobody can censor our transactions. Uh, if some transaction uh, appears and become available to honest node within some fixed uh, period of time with overwhelming probability, it will appear within our blockchain. So, this is Linus property. It's the general definition of Linus for uh, Cardano. Uh, before that, uh, <coughs> it was analysis of uh, Bitcoin protocol. Uh, the paper was called Bitcoin Backbone Bone Protocol. Uh, this, <coughs> uh, 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 this is why definition uh, of uh, Linux. Some another uh, protocol uh, protocols uh, uh, state protocol use a little bit uh, narrow definition uh, of uh, Linux, but uh, we use wide definition uh, both for Cardano and uh, for uh, Bitcoin. So persistence. If transaction uh, become uh, 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 included in this, into this part, it is immutable and uh, it will not disappear at all. And, uh, and all of will see the same history uh, with the persistent part of their blockchains uh, will be eventually included and uh, with, uh, a little bit later, uh, after a necessary uh, amount of information work. The third property uh, it is a property of uh, permission for block forgers to participate in block generation, it is called fairness. Uh, fairness means uh, within system, within the proof of state protocol, or some hash rate within uh, <coughs> proof of work protocol, uh, our reward uh, will be proportional uh, to this, uh, uh, our sh uh, shared part of the hash rate or of the state within system. Uh, it's very important because uh, if, for example, someone comes to mining, he, bu uh, he buys uh, uh, hardware miners, and he expects that uh, this miner, uh, this hardware miner, will give uh, him uh, some reward uh, to, <coughs> uh, and this reward should be proportional to his uh, mining power. Uh, in general, uh, uh, for the current Bitcoin, uh, this uh, holds uh, true. Of course, it holds true also for Cardano. Uh, but there is theoretical analysis uh, for attacks that are called uh, selfish mining. And uh, this selfish, selfish mining uh, means that someone uh, keeping a uh, less uh, hash rate uh, might get more uh, reward than, he, uh, than his uh, hash rate power. For example, someone uh, might have 30% uh, of uh, hash rate uh, within some network, but his reward uh, will be greater than this 30%. Uh, uh, okay, uh, so that's about <coughs> general uh, properties of uh, distributed ledgers and uh, blockchains. Can I ask a question afterwards or right now? Uh, you can ask right now, yeah. Okay. Uh, if the question was like, uh, since like ASIC boost to something like this, so uh, basically it's not, do you know this? Like uh, ASIC boost? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, basically it also means like uh, that you have like particular part of uh, like 20% or something of uh, hash power, but you can uh, actually get much more out of the network. Is it, uh, is it like, uh, from your point of view, is it uh, normal or not? Because, well, basically it's like program or program, so hash power is, you understand it? Like? Uh, yes, uh, uh, <coughs> so basic boost is a little bit different uh, token. 
so it is uh, oriented on uh, more optimization on, yeah. uh, on hash, uh, hash, hash rate. Uh, if you are speaking about selfish mining, uh, it means that uh, uh, we have uh, some uh, blockchain view and uh, someone mines. Uh, he generated a new block uh, extending the current chain, but he doesn't uh, share this block with the network. Uh, it is called selfish mining. And uh, what advantages uh, does it give uh, to this participant? Uh, until someone else will generate uh, such new block, he has this uh, time t uh, that gives him some advantage. Of course, uh, if he, uh, this uh, uh, party that uh, tries to implement self-hash mining has uh, uh, enough small uh, part of hash rate, uh, this uh, will not give him a big advantage. But if he has enough big share of the network, uh, like thirty uh, percent or something, something like that, uh, it gives him uh, more advantage. Yeah. Can you just uh, yeah. follow? Well, basically, what why I mentioned uh, IC boost is that uh, like uh, optimization happens not on like uh, so it's not like cheating, direct cheating, yeah. but it's kind of uh, programming optimization. So yeah. basically, the person has like ten percent of uh, hash rate, but it can extract like fifteen percent. So do you consider it like fair or not? Like from this point of view, because uh, somebody, somebody is optimizing from, uh, stuff. From yeah. protocol point of view, that's uh, quite quite okay. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> if we go uh, to the directly to the protocol, we just uh, have some hash rate. How this uh, hash rate is implemented on CPU, uh, GPU, FPGA, or ASIC, or ASIC with ASIC boost, uh, it doesn't matter. It's okay. quite it's quite fair. Okay, so if we go back to Satoshi view, Satoshi Nakamoto view. It, uh, he wrote something like one CPU, one volt. But okay. of course, uh, it, uh, it doesn't uh, hold uh, as for now. We have uh, one ASIC and uh, millions or e even more of uh, uh, hashes uh, for, for one per one unit. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for your question. OK, uh, so uh, <coughs> next uh, we go uh, to the. Uh, oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> Uh, next, we go to the uh, proof of uh, your uh, consensus. Uh, so, <clears throat> uh, this consensus is uh, oriented uh, to uh, solve some computational uh, puzzle, like finding pre-image uh, of the hash function. So, uh, speaking uh, in plain words, uh, we have some task, uh, and solution for this task is very hard to find, but uh, it's very uh, easy to verify the solution is already uh, found. Uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, proof of work, uh, uh, at least for the current uh, uh, approaches, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, most, mostly widely used approaches. Uh, it is uh, oriented to some uh, physical source cons uh, consumption. So, as for mining, we uh, consume some uh, electric energy. Uh, this uh, energy is used uh, uh, as, as power source uh, for ASIC miners. And uh, uh, having a limited amount of energy, uh, we have a limited amount of uh, computation. And so uh, here uh, we have uh, some limitation of number of attempts so that can be solved. Uh, that's a very good property uh, from a protocol security point of view uh, because uh, we have limited resources. Uh, but of course, it's very bad uh, from an envi environmental uh, point of view. We waste a huge amount of energy, a huge amount of energy uh, for nothing, uh, just for uh, securing uh, Bitcoin blockchain, for example. And uh, while uh, hash rate uh, remains uh, high, uh, blockchain remains uh, secure. But, uh, if uh, hash rate uh, decreases, uh, uh, like we see. Uh, so for Ethereum Classic, uh, security becomes uh, quite uh, low and uh, uh, cryptocurrency uh, might suffer from uh, uh, double spend attack even for a uh, very long, uh, uh, <coughs> very long uh, range of blocks. Okay, uh, for proof of work, we expect uh, that uh, the uh, reward is proportional uh, uh, to hash rate. And uh, miners must be constantly online. Uh, and consume energy. Uh, 
uh, so uh, all miners are online. Uh, all of them uh, run their ASICs, and all these ASICs are going to consume energy. Okay, uh, and uh, here uh, we uh, have uh, such uh, uh, property. Uh, moreover, uh, here we must have uh, enough long uh, period of time between uh, blocks. So why do we have this uh, 10 minutes uh, between, uh, t uh, between Bitcoin uh, blocks? It is very important that network uh, is uh, synchronized, is fully synchronized uh, <coughs> uh, when one block is arrived and uh, then uh, the next block uh, is generated. Otherwise, uh, the uh, blockchain might be uh, selected. And uh, in this case, uh, <coughs> a double spend attack or uh, attack on persistence uh, is more general attack than double spend. Uh, become uh, quite uh, uh, much more easier uh, comparing to <coughs> uh, comparing to the class tokens. Uh, what what does it mean? It means we have some blockchain and one block was uh, generated, one new block was generated, and this block was sent uh, to the network. And imagine that we have block time in Bitcoin, uh, not uh, 10 minutes. But for example, like 10 or 15 seconds, something like that, 10 seconds. When this block was uh, generated uh, <coughs> and uh, when it was spreading all over the network, uh, while this uh, block was spreading, some another uh, block on the another part of the network was also uh, generated. And in this case, miners generated two blocks on the same uh, height. Honest miners generated two blocks of the same height. Uh, height. That uh, should be, uh, uh, should be <coughs> uh, solved by the protocol. It perfectly solves by the Nakamoto consensus in Bitcoin, but uh, what is bad here? Uh, another part of the network mining on another page. Imagine that here we have, for example, 40% of miners, also uh, uh, honest miners, or uh, uh, let, let, let us have sort of, of honest miners. So uh, now amount of uh, honest miners here in network we have 60 percent. 60 percent is definitely greater than uh, uh, 50 percent. So uh, adversary has here only 40 percent of hash rate. So uh, if we don't have such uh, uh, in uh, uh, that, that is quite quite normal. But uh, if such cases uh, happen enough frequently, in this case, 40% can be uh, uh, this 40% can be taken against this fork or against this fork, and 40% is definitely greater than 30%. In this case, uh, attack becomes much more easier uh, for adversary, and. Uh, this uh, greatly decreases the security of, uh, of the protocol. Uh, and in this case, we need to have enough long block time, uh, block time uh, for uh, proof of work, uh, proof of work protocols. Yeah. Can I ask yes, can another please. question? Because it's kind of So like recent uh, events in Belarus, when like uh, they shut down the whole internet, uh, like which goes outside. So basically it was a great possibility to like to attack Bitcoin inside of Belarus, if I'm not mistaken, according to the world of which. So basically, if some adversary has like uh, like sixty percent of Belarusian like Bitcoin network power, he can probably have attacked like uh, Bitcoin exchanges, which is uh, like uh, present in Belarus, and, and like uh, do some kind of double spend or whatever. If I'm not mistaken, no? Uh, yes, you are thinking in the right direction. The, uh, the total more, well, the general model is a little bit more more complex, uh, but uh, it is called. Uh, so it says uh, you are speaking about uh, attack, which is called um, eclipse attack. So uh, here, uh, some part uh, of the honest network is isolated, and you cannot see the uh, rest of the uh, the rest of the, uh, the world. It can be done by uh, network outages, uh, intentional or uh, unintentional, or something like that. Yes, and uh, if we are within such a clipsed uh, network, uh, then adversary uh, has much more possibilities uh, to do within uh, such network. 
not sure that uh, everything is very good for adversary because we have some difficulty. Honest miners will generate uh, their blocks, but block time uh, will be not 10 minutes, but uh, can be one hour or two hours between blocks or something like that, uh, because they have. Yeah, uh, okay. uh, the difficulty remains the same, but uh, yeah. okay. uh, <coughs> hash power within uh, this eclipse part of the network uh, is relatively small compared to, to the uh, whole network. Uh, <coughs> uh, but uh, of course, uh, such eclipsing is uh, good conditions for attacking. Okay. okay. Uh, so. <coughs> Uh, if we are speaking about uh, proof of stake approach, uh, in uh, proof of stake approach, uh, we take a little bit <coughs> uh, another direction, uh, which is uh, which has uh, uh, enough significant uh, amount of advantages. So. Uh, what makes uh, uh, miners, uh, what incentivize miners uh, to be honest within proof of work approach? A person uh, uh, <coughs> uh, took his fault, uh, his uh, fiat, uh, fiat money, uh, and, uh, uh, and let's imagine that uh, there is a stable exchange rate and so on, some, something like uh, you <coughs> some period of time. He invested his fiat, he bought uh, hardware. Uh, and he invested fiat, and he got his reward uh, in uh, some cryptocurrency. Uh, because uh, then he converts uh, this uh, cryptocurrency into fiat. <coughs> uh, if uh, he uh, starts to attack the network, if he participates as a part uh, of adversarial nodes, in this case, uh, exchange rate will <coughs> uh, uh, he will lose his investment because his reward in. Uh, 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 cryptocurrency will be uh, the same proportion to his rate, uh, but exchange rate uh, will be uh, much much smaller. So he's interested uh, to uh, keep the network strong uh, and uh, uh, be predictable and follow, uh, follow, follow the rules. Uh, but uh, it leads to huge energy consumption, it leads to unnecessary electronic equipment and uh, so on. For proof of stake, we take another approach. Okay, some person is already uh, rich within such cryptocurrency. Uh, he has wealth in this cryptocurrency. He is interested to keep his wealth. Okay, then let's give this person a right to uh, produce new blocks, to generate new blocks. So uh, generation uh, will be based not on hash rate, but block generation will be uh, <coughs> based on the uh, uh, amount of stake. So proof of stake. Uh, proving that someone uh, keeps the system. If for proof of work we have some lottery between miners and uh, the chance we have the same lottery, but uh, the chance to win uh, the right to generate new block is proportional uh, to the wealth uh, within the system. We don't need uh, huge mining uh, <coughs> rigs, uh, we don't need a uh, huge uh, uh, huge energy consu consumption and so on. Everything can be done if we have uh, perfect protocols. If we have very good protocols, we can do. Uh, we can provide the same level of security uh, using traditional uh, PC. Uh, moreover, we don't need uh, to have all miners uh, to generate block, and they uh, switch on and uh, participate network just before uh, their time slot to generate the block. They <coughs> collect. Uh, uh, transactions or blocks uh, from uh, input endorsers, they issue their new blocks and uh, <coughs> they can go offline. And uh, here, uh, within uh, good uh, cryptographic support for proof, uh, proof of stake, <coughs> uh, we have uh, almost uh, the same properties uh, as for uh, proof of work uh, protocol. <coughs> okay. <coughs> uh, what was the main uh, problem for uh, pre, uh, I will call such protocols uh, pre robots uh, Protocols like uh, NXT <coughs> and some other. Uh, we need to have uh, some randomness. And uh, this randomness is used uh, to select uh, uh, block, uh, block forgers uh, among all uh, stakeholders. And NXT and some other protocols <coughs> uh, just uh, took uh, this randomness uh, from uh, blockchain itself. So what does it mean? It means uh, we have some blocks 
sequence of blocks. And uh, <coughs> very simple example, we take several blocks, uh, hash, uh, find the hash of them, and uh, uh, ba based on this hash, <coughs> we take randomness. But what does it mean uh, for the protocol? When I generate a new block, I can also <coughs> uh, try different va variants. I have my turn to generate block, and block generation <coughs> for my throat. <coughs> Uh, and block generation uh, takes almost uh, nothing, uh, uh, no, no, it take, consumes no resources uh, for the person. He uh, can try a million or even billion of variants of these new blocks. Uh, let it be P1, P2, uh, and so on, something like BK. And K beta can be extremely high. Uh, high. And uh, he can see the possible history for this block, the possible uh, history for this block, so on the possible history for this block. And uh, <coughs> uh, such block forger uh, selects uh, the uh, best uh, chain that generates uh, <coughs> the best uh, amount, uh, the uh, best ratio of uh, his uh, blocks within such a chain. And uh, in such case, he tries very many blocks and he selects uh, <coughs> only one of them, which uh, gives him uh, the, uh, big, uh, the, big, uh, the bigger amount of block, the uh, I, the K, that is generated, and uh, he <coughs> maximizes the uh, chance, uh, his chances uh, to generate next blocks. And this is called uh, grinding attacks. for uh, <coughs> almost uh, all uh, protocols uh, that came uh, before uh, Ouroboros. It was a classical example of branding attack for, for example, for uh, NXT protocol. Uh, <coughs> uh, this uh, problem uh, was uh, successfully solved and uh, it was uh, <coughs> uh, formally proved uh, for Ouroboros uh, <coughs> uh, that uh, <coughs> uh, Ouroboros doesn't suffer uh, from uh, this problem. Uh, and uh, we have Ouroboros as the first uh, provable uh, secure uh, protocol. <coughs> wait, any questions here? Okay, so <coughs> we have Ouroboros. So, uh, for Ouroboros, uh, we also have blockchain. Blocks are generated, and uh, this uh, block generation uh, is divided into some period of times, which are called epochs. Uh, within one epoch, <coughs> uh, we have a regular uh, generation of blocks, and uh, here uh, we have uh, so-called uh, flop leaders. Time is divided into uh, uh, so-called time slots. Uh, for the current implementation of Ouroboros, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, time slot is uh, uh, 20 seconds. <coughs> and uh, 20 seconds is enough uh, to deliver a block to each node uh, uh, within our uh, globe. <coughs> so uh, within time, time slot, we have slot leader. This the slot leader is a randomly elected uh, uh, according to special cryptographic protocol uh, that guarantees uh, fairness uh, of, uh, of election and uh, the service can be biased uh, or forged or something like that. Uh, we have time slot. Within this time slot, uh, slot, uh, slot, leaders, uh, slot leader goes uh, online, <coughs> uh, takes new transactions uh, uh, for, for <coughs> some, uh, from uh, uh, input endorsers uh, generate his new block and sends uh, this block uh, to the uh, to the network. He extends uh, the longest uh, chain. Uh, 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 <coughs> fairness uh, <coughs> uh, for generation is uh, achieved by a special multi-party computation uh, protocol. How it works? <coughs> Some set of parties. Uh, generate uh, some randomness and put this randomness on blockchain but not in uh, plain text uh, it is uh, committed 
uh, via special protocol which is called PVSS, <coughs> publicly, uh, publicly verifiable secret sharing. So we have randomness, and this randomness is committed uh, uh, within uh, the first. Uh, after commitment is finished, when every, uh, everyone uh, is already com uh, committed, uh, this random values, uh, and nobody else will uh, uh, commit uh, new randomness, after that, we begin opening. And uh, on this part, it's quite possible that someone is malicious or uh, someone goes offline. And uh, for this case, we have <coughs> this third phase, which is called reveal. Uh, two properties of PVSS, uh, publicly verifiable secret sharing. Uh, uh, if some party committed value here uh, or, and goes offline somewhere here and uh, this uh, phase is skipped, then uh, uh, during reveal phase, we can open this commitment. So here we have some commitment with zero knowledge proofs uh, that uh, commitment can be opened by the rest of parties. Uh, 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 all randomness is committed. Uh, some randomness is opened here. And uh, majority of participants uh, open the rest of uh, randomness that was committed here. So <coughs> here everything is closed. Here everything is opened, all, all values. Uh, nobody knows the randomness on this phase, but at this uh, end we have randomness and randomness is unbiased. This is uh, the uh, core property of Ouroboros protocol. Uh, in such a way, uh, we protect uh, the system uh, from uh, grinding uh, attacks. Yeah, it's uh, one of the main uh, <coughs> properties of Ouroboros. Uh, of course, uh, there are another good properties like uh, uh, we don't uh, need to have uh, all block forgers constantly online. Uh, so, uh, block forgers for this block uh, goes uh, here on the beginning of epoch. We have randomness uh, for current epoch. Here we have randomness for the next epoch. And here we have randomness, here we have next randomness, then we have next randomness, and so on. So we can present it as uh, some point before this fragment generation. And, uh, you know, Roboros means uh, this uh, world snake, which bites uh, itself for, uh, for, uh, for its tail. So this is uh, head and tail. We have this round process. Okay, <coughs> uh, that's uh, for a main uh, 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 main properties uh, for uh, Ouroboros. Any questions up to now? Can you just tell a bit more about the difference between open and reveal stages? Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> uh, the, uh, the question is on uh, difference between open and reveal stages. Okay, uh, so during the commit uh, stage, I put uh, on blockchain some randomness that is encrypted, uh, some information that is needed uh, for its decryption, and uh, some proofs. Uh, Description and proofs. Uh, uh, and some proofs uh, that uh, this value can be decrypted. So uh, here nobody is known. Uh, on opening, I put this randomness uh, uh, in uh, plain text. And everyone can check this correspondence. But if for some reason, uh, due to electricity shortage or something like that, I went offline, I cannot open it. So there is no randomness. Then uh, we go to the reveal stage. In this reveal stage, uh, randomness uh, <coughs> uh, is decrypted using this key, uh, uh, uses this decryption information, and here you have randomness, but this uh, randomness is uh, revealed not by the uh, participant itself, but the majority of the community, uh, of uh, the committee that runs this PVS system. So uh, when we have open stage, uh, the person which generates randomness opens it, and it can be easily correspo uh, checked correspondence between uh, what appeared here and what uh, what was committed here. Uh, when you do reveal, uh, other uh, parties open this randomness using more complex technique, but they do uh, open it. Yeah. Does it, doesn't it uh, like uh, open stages uh, 
uh, explicit, like uh, maybe it's possible to operate with all this open stage, like all open, uh, like because uh, well, basically it's uh, basically all the protocol can operate without uh, truly like this guy who uh, generates randomness being online on an open stage. Is it? Uh, in general, you're right, but it uh, provides us uh, extra um, communication why we need to have the shares, uh, the share can, can be jointly processed, so we do need uh, to do extra exchange via via network and so on. Here process is more complex, it allows the network more and so on, uh, so from efficiency it's better to have open here. But to provide unbiased, uh, fair randomness, we definitely need this stage. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Then uh, we go <coughs> So uh, we have our boards. That is a very good solution. But of course, we have a very good solution, but whether it's a uh, perfect solution. What open question uh, we may have and how we solve this uh, question? Uh, first of all, uh, <coughs> uh, when we have uh, 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 reverse, reverse classic, we have uh, spoke, uh, discussed it right now. Uh, it is not a classical uh, BFT, Byzantine Fault Tolerance Protocol, with uh, finality. So can we have uh, some protocol that is uh, classical BFT? So uh, what, uh, what does finality mean? Finality means uh, we came uh, to some persistent uh, part, and for this persistent part, uh, the <coughs> blocks are fully irreversible. Uh, for classical uh, protocols, whether it is uh, Nakamoto consensus or uh, or, <coughs> or, 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 or classic or something like that, uh, no, uh, probability that is less than one, something like one minus epsilon, Epsilon can be arbitrarily small, small, 1 over million or 1 over billion or something like that. We can put here any value if we want, but this value is smaller than 1. With classical BFT with finality, probability that uh, this stage will not be reverted is uh, strictly equal to 1. So can we have classical uh, BFT protocol? The second question uh, is Synchronous time uh, model. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, it means that Raporos Classic operates in the setting <coughs> when uh, we have uh, uh, synchronous time, uh, when we have these time slots and know that our network will deliver block within given period of time. We rely on that and uh, we are, our security is strictly uh, relied on, that, on the fact that blocks uh, will be delivered to the network within 20 seconds. If it will be a longer period of time, like 40 seconds or one minute, it will be a serious threat to robot security. Uh, uh, this is called a uh, uh, synchronous time model. Uh, can, we, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, can we drop this limitation and uh, uh, to say something like that? We have some limited time for delivery, uh, but we don't know it. Uh, we rely only uh, to the fact that uh, eventually a message will be delivered, but we don't know when. So it will be called a semi-synchronous <coughs> model. Semi-synchronous uh, The next <coughs> property is called adaptive corruption. It's a very uh, strong assumption uh, for uh, adversarial uh, uh, for an uh, adversary. Uh, if you speak uh, uh, on, uh, uh, <coughs> on adaptive corruption, it means that adversary selects uh, nodes where, which he wants and say uh, and corrupts uh, them uh, 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 <coughs> instantly. For example, he sees all the network and he uh, he, uh, he has uh, less than 50 percent of node that uh, he can corrupt at any moment and he, he wants. So he sees his network and says, uh, I like this, 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 and the node, and uh, they become corrupted at once. Uh, this is called adaptive corruption. Of course, it's uh, uh, not good uh, for Ouroboros classic. Uh, 
for Ouroboros Classic, we have randomness in the beginning of the epoch, and everyone knows slot leaders. And within uh, adaptive corruption model, uh, <coughs> adversary just corrupts uh, these participants, and then the protocol uh, is uh, broken. Of course, it's uh, not realistic, but uh, from theoretical point of view, of course, it's good to have this uh, adaptive corruption uh, property. Uh, the second, uh, the, the next property that we would like to have, it is called a long range attack. Against uh, proof of state. <coughs> this attack organized for a very long period of time. For example, someone uh, had a huge amount of coins in the very beginning of some uh, proof of stake cryptocurrency. He participated honestly. Uh, in some period, uh, within some time moment, he spent uh, all his coins and he doesn't own this uh, cryptocurrency at all. But he has his private key. He, uh, he still has his private key. Uh, what happens uh, if he uh, having no coins currently? Uh, he has no coins, but he has pri private keys. Uh, <coughs> we have blocks that were already uh, generated, and we have something like here. Uh, some person gets rid of these coins somewhere here, but he has keys that are valid within uh, such uh, <coughs> uh, uh, such, <coughs> uh, such such blocks. So he tries to build uh, to build his alternative uh, history, and eventually, uh, if he has enough long period of time, such uh, because we have some. Uh, <coughs> Uh, features that uh, didn't accept uh, for as long as it's, uh, that some period of time and so on, but from theoretical point uh, of view, of course, it's uh, also good uh, to have protection from uh, range attacks. Uh, uh, moreover, uh, leaking the current uh, uh, key. Uh, what does it mean? <coughs> We have some, uh, some node. This node is uh, online. Uh, it runs and it can, can be cracked by hackers. Uh, hackers can steal our private key that is used uh, for uh, signing, our, uh, signing our blocks uh, to generate some alternative chain. Of course, uh, it's also uh, not uh, so. It's, uh, uh, it's real threat, and we need to, 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 <coughs> to deal with that. We need to prevent this from, uh, from, from it. Uh, the next property. Uh, no uh, trusted time source. Uh, when we speak about uh, time slot or Boros Classic, for example, uh, we say that uh, uh, each 20 second we have time slot and we have a slot leader for it. But we need to synchronize uh, our uh, clocks between uh, different participants. And we rely on some external network so, uh, server, uh, on some external network time server that provides uh, time and we rely on this time. We need also to uh, trust this, uh, <coughs> uh, this external uh, <coughs> uh, time server. Moreover, it was a classical example, not long time ago, uh, some another, um, I, I will not uh, tell the name, I love this cryptocurrency, but you will understand on which <laughs> cryptocurrency I'm speaking about. They are testing, uh, they are switching from proof of work, uh, they are going to switch from proof of work to proof of stake, and they are uh, they are testing their own proof of stake uh, protocol. And uh, they are testing it uh, recently, uh, maybe late July or uh, uh, August, just crashed. Why? Uh, because they rely on external uh, time servers. And this time so, uh, uh, different time servers uh, will provide a different time to different network due, due, just due to, to failure. And their testnet just failed. So uh, uh, for proof of stake, we should not have a uh, trusted time source. <coughs> uh, the next pro property that we would like uh, to have uh, is uh, uh, privacy preserving uh, Uh, proof of stake. So for privacy preserving, uh, we need to uh, pro uh, we need to generate blocks, but we need to uh, um, uh, prove 
that we own this coin, which uh, uh, win uh, in the lottery. And this coin uh, <coughs> uh, has the right to generate new block. But if the cryptocurrency is privacy preserving, we should not reveal it. So that's the next uh, property that we would like to have. And of course, uh, uh, scaling to extremely uh, high throughput. If you are speaking, for example, for Ouroboros Classic, uh, we have this time of 20 seconds uh, within uh, uh, which uh, the block must reach uh, all uh, nodes within the network. If we put huge blocks like, like one gigabyte, this uh, block of one gigabyte needs to be downloaded from another peer, fully verified and sent further. Of course, the bigger block, the more time uh, it takes. And. Uh, <coughs> uh, 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 we have limitation in block size, we have 10 slot of 20 seconds, and here we have limitation of uh, throughput of uh, Ouroboros Plus. And we also need to solve this problem. So this is uh, classical uh, open questions for very good solution versus perfect solution. So that's what we need to have in the perfect solution. Now how we solve this in uh, Ouroboros family, more as BFT or OEFT. So this protocol uh, is blockchain-based, but is classical uh, Byzantine fault-tolerant uh, protocol. It provides uh, finality. Uh, as traditional BFT protocol, uh, it uh, provides uh, uh, strengths uh, uh, in the setting when we have uh, the server part less than n over 3. But if we have some another setting, we can increase this uh, <coughs> better here or even uh, to n over uh, 2. Uh, moreover, for classical BFT, with permission environment, we also have uh, a possibility to have instant confirmation of transactions. We don't need to wait some amount of blocks for Ouroboros BFT. Uh, nodes, uh, might, uh, uh, nodes may provide instant confirmation that this transaction will appear in some uh, blocks in the future. Uh, this is for uh, uh, classical BFT protocol. Synchronous and semi-synchronous mode. Here uh, we have uh, Ouroboros Prowse. In Ouroboros Prowse, we switch uh, from synchronous mode to semi-synchronous mode. We have much shorter time slots, uh, for shared error, one time one second. Uh, most of the but all the rest uh, slots, uh, 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 which are not empty, uh, have slot leaders. And uh, here uh, we have uh, a property uh, of uh, semi-synchronous. We do not rely on uh, some uh, uh, definitely known uh, <coughs> uh, block propagation uh, time. We uh, just uh, oh, we remain within semi-synchronous setting. And also, browse use so-called verifiable random function uh, to generate randomness. Instead of PVSS, we switch to verifiable random functions. And this verifiable random functions uh, allows uh, to tolerate with adaptive corruption. Uh, <coughs> nobody, know, uh, nobody knows in advance who will be the current slot leader. Only the person uh, who uh, owns his private key can uh, apply uh, this private key uh, to the randomness within the beginning of the epoch. And uh, only this person knows that he will be slot, a slot leader uh, within given period of time. Then he issues block, and the uh, block uh, already appeared in the network, and only after that, adversary can uh, find out that this person is a slot leader. Nobody knows slot leaders in advance. And here we provide uh, uh, adaptive corruption also with uh, Ouroboros graphs. Uh, the next property uh, that uh, uh, also implemented together with uh, Browse. Uh, it is uh, already implemented in Shelly. It is uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, key evolving signatures. Uh, what does it mean? It means uh, if someone signed the block, uh, then he applies a special uh, procedure, cryptographic procedure, uh, that transforms his private key into the next one. And the previous key uh, is just destroyed. What it means? It means uh, on the system we have only the current block and even this node is hacked. Uh, in this case, uh, this leaked key will not uh, allow attacker 
uh, to forge uh, alternative history. So uh, attacker generate uh, the current uh, uh, block in the current slot, which is quite, quite short, around one second, or for the next slots. But for the next slots, uh, we can regenerate this key uh, from the master key, and everything will be okay. So here we have uh, extra protection from uh, not uh, picking. So this is uh, already implemented with uh, in next uh, releases of Cardano. Uh, it's protection from uh, long-range uh, attacks against uh, POS, uh, from uh, such a situation. We have Uroboros uh, Genesis. It tolerates with such type of attacks. Uh, moreover, it tolerates uh, with uh, so-called uh, so dynamic availability. So it takes uh, within the model that uh, we do not rely on the network. There can be network shortages, outages, uh, uh, there can be some uh, participants that are unavailable and so on. And uh, Ouroboros uh, Genesis uh, tolerates with the next uh, uh, release. It will be included. Next one, uh, no trusted time source. Uh, Here uh, we have a protocol which is called Ouroboros Chronos. Uh, it means that some uh, participant is uh, offline. Uh, then uh, he goes online. He ta uh, his block uh, can be uh, very highly biased, but he follows protocol. Uh, he follows all chains uh, that he sees uh, currently in the network, and following such chains, he synchronizes his clock. And uh, 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 when his time slot comes, uh, he uh, has perfectly uh, synchronized uh, uh, clock, uh, his, his own clock that is needed uh, to generate his own uh, block. So uh, for Ouroboros Kronos, we do not uh, rely on external time source at all. So uh, for uh, privacy preserving uh, uh, proof of stake, we have Ouroboros Crip. Uh, let me remember how Crip signals. Uh, it's a protocol that is <coughs> oriented on uh, privacy during proof of stake. All stake is private, but even within this fully private stake and uh, full, uh, fully private transaction, I can prove that uh, that my coin uh, win uh, uh, the right to generate this block. Repsinos is based on, on Genesis and on uh, Browse. Okay, uh, scaling to extra uh, high uh, throughput. Here we have Ouroboros Hydra. Uh, Ouroboros <coughs> Hydra uh, uh, provides uh, uh, extra functionality, extra level, and within this extra level uh, can be uh, uh, provided uh, uh, channels, and this channel uh, can provide payments of, uh, uh, of chain. So uh, main part uh, is based on uh, Ouroboros uh, Genesis with some modifications uh, if needed from the uh, for example, uh, and uh, very many transactions, uh, they are not put uh, on chain, they, they are done off chain, and uh, they do not uh, need to wait some confirmation blocks, uh, and so on. It provides uh, extra, uh, thro uh, extra uh, throughput uh, and uh, uh, decreases uh, confirmation, uh, <coughs> the transaction confirmation times. So, these questions are already uh, solved with uh, uh, the family of Ouroboros protocol. And uh, this one uh, makes, uh, <coughs> uh, pro provides uh, to Ouroboros family uh, uh, the same, all, or almost the same, pro uh, it depends on definition, almost the same properties as uh, full fledged uh, proof of work protocol. But uh, using these advanced cryptographic techniques, we uh, do not need. Uh, to use specialized hardware, we don't need to use uh, huge electricity consumption and so on. We do that only with cryptography, with uh, just conventional uh, uh, hardware, with a regular PC or even uh, smart, uh, smartphones. Everything is provided. Uh, we also have <coughs> another protocol. Uh, uh, it was not officially announced yet, uh, uh, so I, I cannot uh, tell uh, more uh, about this protocol. But I just uh, say that uh, we have uh, the next protocol. Uh, it is going to be published soon, and this protocol will provide even more than uh, proof of work uh, protocol uh, provides. So we are equal to proof of work, and we will, pro uh, we will provide even more than proof of work protocols. Okay, that's. 
all for Ouroboros family. Thank you for your attention and I'm ready for your questions. We have a question uh, from uh, <coughs> from online, mm -hmm. so from a uh, pool operator and delegator uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any insights to primary security risks and the mitigation factors? Uh, so, in general, if you are speaking about, about risks, each protocol has uh, around 50, 60, 70 pages description and here we have hundreds of pages about security <laughs> risks analysis and their mitigation and it's only from academic point of view. Uh, if you are speaking about implementation uh, there are uh, even more uh, details on the secure implementation and we have highly qualified team uh, that is uh, <coughs> working through formal specification and so on. It's not my topic but uh, I work with these guys and they are highly, highly qualified and when I listen to that to the, to the talks on uh, our internal uh, seminars, so it's, 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 re it's really interesting. There are uh, very many details on uh, <coughs> implementation of the protocol, uh, and it is taken into account, and moreover we have uh, uh, yeah, external security audit, moreover we have special team uh, that uh, constantly monitors the code uh, online. Besides that, we have specifics uh, for analysis for stake pool operators, uh, for staking, uh, for uh, stake delegation and so on. It's also, we have uh, extremely highly qualified specialists. Uh, uh, it is led by a professor, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, professor from Oxford University. Uh, uh, there are uh, uh, at least one paper is published and a couple of, uh, I'm not sure that another couple of us were already published. So it is also, um, uh, we have the direction. So there are very uh, rich uh, field uh, of this question, and uh, I, I just I said that we have uh, <coughs> uh, we have a careful analysis and we have highly qualified team for this analysis. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Then if there are no questions, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. Look forward to see you. Okay, well, we'll end uh, the official part of the meetup, and uh, maybe if Roman has a little bit of time, uh, you can come and ask uh, some other questions, maybe uh, on some other topics related to Cardano. And also, you can ask me because uh, last uh, months I'm studying the Cardano ecosystem quite a lot, and uh, we have plans for another uh, meetups in September. Um, and thank you everyone for coming. We also, I, I want to thank uh, Azure Ada Staking Pool Operator uh, for sponsoring this meetup. And we prepared uh, smaller presents for you, uh, like uh, caps and uh, t-shirts. Uh, I'll distribute them now. So uh, thanks, uh, I know uh, a part of you whom I don't know, uh, let's uh, connect because we'll make uh, more events about Cardano soon. So thank you. And, uh, and big thanks to Roman for finding the time because uh, English is very scientific oriented. Such uh, <coughs> there are in teams such scientists as Roman, uh, professors, uh, educators, and uh, all this technology is uh, uh, checked uh, and uh, a lot of peer reviews. And for example, about staking, this IDM was going for months because, uh, before it, uh, before the Shelly phase started. So we'll be making more content about Cardano and more meetups. So, thank you.